Evening, everybody. This is Keanu Reeves saying welcome to the Graham Norton Show. Good evening. Yes, it's bank holiday again. Everyone looking forward to it? Yes. Uh, another one. No work on Monday. Mind you, for some people, there'll be no work on Tuesday. Yeah, Defence Secretary... <laughs> Kevin <laughs> Williamson has been sacked for allegedly leaking sensitive information. Theresa said he had to go because she no longer had full confidence in him. And you think, and you're staying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's local elections this week. I know, exciting. And uh, <laughs> the good news is, Theresa, she went out and about, yeah. She visited a phone box. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brexit, collapse in government, but hey, she found time to visit that phone box. <laughs> Apparently, they're turning it into a library by putting books in there. Well, you know, nice to have something to read when you're going to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, should we get some guests on? Let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, we'll have an audience with the Queen of Pop herself, Kylie Minogue, will be here! <laughs> and with a music from this year's Eurovision hope for Michael Rice! Yeah! First, the Elton John biopic Rocket Man is the most hotly awaited film of the year, and we've got two of its stars playing lyricist Bernie Taupin. This man rose to fame as Billy Elliot and has gone on to become one of our most versatile actors. Please welcome Mr. Jamie Bell! <laughs> himself is the star of films like Kingsman, Robin Hood and Eddie the Eagle. It's Taron Edgerton! Oh. 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 This vast the winning actor has gone from playing Karen McDonald in Coronation Street to the scorned wife in the smash hit Dr. Foster. Now she's in new period drama Gentleman Jack. Please welcome back Saran Jones! Oh. <laughs> and he's the Hollywood action man who starred in Point Break, Speed and The Matrix. Now he's suiting up once again a super assassin, John Wick. Please welcome Keanu Reeves! Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. You, you can shove up, Jamie. I'm shuffling up. Yeah, shuffling shove up, up. shove up. up. Snuggle in. Yeah. Snuggle yeah. in. Thank you. It's a nice celebrity grouping. Uh, hello, <laughs> uh, Keanu, did you meet everybody backstage? Yes, we did. OK, fine, I'll leave it there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because we start tonight with Keanu Reeves. Uh, you don the suit once more in John Wick, Chapter 3, Parabellum. <laughs> yeah. It's out on the 15th of May. And, like, the success of these films is amazing. I mean, people love this character. Yeah, um, which is really nice. I mean, you hope that, you know, when we it's do because they're work, absolutely amazing. They're oh, so kind. good. There's that's nothing kind. else out there like them. No, no, the set pieces in this movie are extraordinary. I haven't seen the third, yeah, obviously, yeah. but the first and second are incredible. I was having my facial done the other day, and B, who does my facial... Hi, B. Hi, was telling me about these films. <laughs> like, the most unlikely person... Well, maybe not, I don't know, but she was... Yeah, she was doing my thing, saying... Tell me the whole John thing, Wick. and his dog dies, and then the thing, and then... And yeah. I was like, wow, OK, yeah. No, yes. I mean, that's really nice to hear. I mean, you know, like, when we do the work, we, we hope that people enjoy it, so it's yeah. been really nice that... And we're used to seeing you in kind of the, the mean streets, but <gasps> this time John Wick goes <coughs> global. Now, is it yeah. actually the Sahara Desert? Yes, yes. I had a vision after Chapter 2 that I saw John Wick in a suit walking in the desert. And I shared that with the director, Chad Stahelski, and he went, that's a good idea. And then, uh, so we tried it, we found a way, and, and it's a remarkable place. It was so, the first time I'd ever been there. So when we see you walking in the desert, that is you in the Sahara? That's me yeah. in the Sahara with Halle Berry. Now, I would say even tonight... <laughs> that's not even, a bad day. No, but <laughs> right. I would say even tonight, you are more suitably dressed for walking through the Sahara than yeah. you are... Because, <laughs> like, lace-up shoes aren't a good idea for no, a sand dune. No, I know, but it's John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> he can't, he's got to change Wouldn't his shoes. Wouldn't he take his tie off? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We, we talked about, like, you know, does he wrap his coat around his head? Does he do all these su survival techniques? No. 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 It's John Wick, he's walking in the desert. <laughs> and, you know, and listen, it's Keanu Reeves and Halle Berry, so you've got to think, how, how could they be upstaged? 
These dogs oh, are yeah. amazing. They're spectacular animals. Now, I, I don't want to spare anyone's blushes, or I don't think this is a spoiler, but there is a lot of ball biting that goes on yes. in, in the film. Yeah, they're so, attack dogs. Ball biting? Ball, balls. Oh, right, OK, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Going for yeah. the sensitive bits. Oh, right. <laughs> now, is that just... Have they just put some cheddar cheese down there? <laughs> how, how do you get a dog to do that? <laughs> cheddar cheese? Dogs yeah. love cheddar think, cheese. Yeah, sausage and cheese. Yeah, yeah. that's how you yeah. train a dog to do anything. Mm -hmm. Sausages and cheese. You don't want them to bite you harder. You want protection, you know? Like, you don't want to entice okay. them. Did you have, like, stunt balls? <laughs> They, they didn't attack his balls. They're, <laughs> they're on his side. But they're so sweet. They're so smart. Um, and, yeah, and so when, once we got into the action of it, it's kind of like dog foo, right? So we have, like, car foo and John Wick, gun foo, and now there's dog foo. So they become part of the action and how he yeah. commands them, and it's pretty extraordinary. Hey, listen, I'll tell you, we've got, a, we've got a clip. This is, essentially, this is you as John Wick doing what you do best. Yeah, but oh. I think this one is... I had the idea of John Wick walking in the desert in a suit and then the director had, well, we need, we need ninjas on motorcycles with swords. And that's what we've got. <laughs> and, so, I mean, that's clearly your face <laughs> yeah. on a motorbike. But, like, but you're not doing that, are you? No. So how? So but yes. But are you on the back? Are you on a but flatbed no. truck or something? Or um, okay. So in John Wick, we tend to just do everything in camera, um, but we couldn't do that. But you do quite a lot of your own stunts, don't you? I don't do any stunts, but I, I do action as much action oh, as okay. I can. Okay. Stunt people do stunts. But but no. But hang on. I don't get hit by a car. No, that I don't get hit by a car. They don't let me get hit by a car. I love that you. I love that you say that because it's so. It's always the case that you're so pushed into saying. You did the stunts, you did the stunts. Mm -hmm. like, no, of course I didn't do the stunts. It's insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I love these stunts. Um, but, Saran, now, I was made. You had a stunt double in Dr. Foster. I know. And I, I, I can't even remember what stunts were in Dr. Foster. Well, we've got a picture of you with your stunt double. I, I think you can see which is which. Um, <laughs> now. Uh... <laughs> that is a bad day when you turn up and they say, here's Ray, <laughs> and he's your stunt double. <laughs> and it's a six. Man. What did he do, though? I can't remember any stunts as Dr. Foster. Was well, it driving? There's a whole other conversation here of why wasn't that a woman anyway. But <laughs> um, uh, I think they may have sorted that out with the Me Too era. They may be like, no, we won't do that again. Um, I drove into the pub car park very fast. Oh, OK. So Ray did that. And that's it. So Ray did that, yeah. Beautiful. And I think they probably did use mine, cos I obviously wanted to do that. It's like... Uh, Ray, I, I can... Could I have a go? <laughs> <laughs> they might have used mine, yeah. Now, it's not just the motorcycles, though, that you're on. You, in this film, you are on a horse. And was that, again, was your idea? Was it another vision? Yes, I had another vision. <laughs> After Chapter 2, John Wick is running out of Central Park, and I said, Chad, I have a vision. And he was like, what, Keanu? And I said, I want to ride a horse. Why don't I ride a horse? I'm trying to escape. And so he said, that's a good idea. <laughs> And so began the training, because with John Wick, you can't just ride a horse. You have to come off the saddle. You're supposed to fall under it, hold onto the pommel. Excuse me. It's fine. And then shoot some guns. <laughs> um, but, uh, but when we were training, I, I couldn't really do it, and I fell. Um, but as you do. And so then they had to create something to make it safe. And so they did this contraption that was like this truck with some beams and then a gentleman on a wire, so I was picked <clears throat> in case I fell off the horse while we were on the streets. And um, so that happened a couple of times. The horse took off, and I was, like, falling, and then they pulled me up. And Wow. But, uh, so that was nice. I tell you who wouldn't have liked this. But it's fun. Jamie Bell. Oh, you're, not, oh. you're not a fan of the horse. I, I did... Listen, I didn't love horses. Me and horses didn't particularly get along, Graham. Um, like, I'd be walking through a... I mean, not randomly walking through a field, but, like, I'd be <laughs> close to a horse, and it'd be like, oh, no, I'm not... Uh, no, that guy's giving me energy, and it would, like, run away, cos it would feel my <clears throat> fear. I was yeah. terrified of them, you know? They're we, big and they're unpredictable. We've, ne we've never connected over this. I was... I was thrown from one on the set of Robin Hood. Oh, you were? And yeah. And I... I got to a whole movie about Robin Hood and I never once got on a horse on camera. Yeah. Because wait, wait, is that wait, true? Is that, is that actually... You were never on horseback? I was never on a horse in that film. Where? What? Because yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't bear to... I couldn't be within, like, ten metres yeah. of them. Because yeah. once I was thrown off, I... Oh, I'm, right, yeah, petrified. sure. Well, now, but then you should talk to Jamie... Because you had a special... Was it a woman or a, a person, anyway? Her name is Camilla Napruce, and she does... She, she does the kind of horse mastery on a lot of uh, films. She's the horse master on Game of Thrones. Like, she, she's done everything. 
And she has a very specific technique, which is just kind of like strap you onto the horse. <laughs> and she's with you on another horse. And she just kind of starts going like, I don't really like this at all. And then she goes quicker and quicker. And you're like, no, seriously, stop. And then she'll ask you incredibly personal questions about your life. How was your father? Well, tell me about your father. Like, what do you feel most guilty about? And then ultimately you're like, I don't, I've never met him. Um, I don't know. <laughs> he was horrible at school. I put, took cigarettes to school and my teacher let me off. Like, and you realize I've totally forgotten about horse riding. That's... And it, it was a crazy kind of therapeutic, um, amazing way of learning to ride a horse. I don't, I, yeah, it so was you will ride different. A you ride a horse. I love riding horses now. I, I went to her like every week after that. I uh, see. I never would have admitted riding. that I won't ride horses had I known that his story. <laughs> 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 hey, guys. Uh, uh, now the other big movie to this week is Rocket Man. Um, yeah. <laughs> The wait is over. You can see it from May the 22nd. Uh, so, Taryn, obviously, you play Elton. Uh, Jamie plays Bernie Taupin, the lyricist. Uh, here's a... <laughs> People are genuinely excited about about this movie, and I suppose what we need to is that, is that this is not a straightforward biopic. It's not he was born and then. No, no, it's um, it's a it's a musical retelling of uh, Elton John's life, and the, the 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 sort of the central relationship in it is his musical partnership and friendship with Bernie Taupin, um, and it's got these elements of fantasy, so it's non-naturalistic kind of strange and kooky and trippy and um and yeah we've been working on it for, for quite a while now probably about 18 months in total when thinking about all the studio time on the songs yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. um so you must be so excited for people to actually see it now yeah i mean t yeah, excited or terrified <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> i mean obviously i i um you'll notice that i don't I, it's me singing so it's so you, we sort of ask the audience to take an imaginative leap because I, obviously it's me singing so i don't yeah, sound yeah. exactly like elton yeah. but it's got i suppose it's got something of the stage show about it in in that way and you sent elton a, a lovely birthday gift do you, do you yes, yes i did yes uh, he sent <laughs> a lovely picture of yourself <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that a costume you wear in the film? No, no, that's one from my own person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you look great, though. Was he pleased with this present? I think he was ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously a lot of pressure on, on you playing Elton, but then Bernie Taupin is this strange man in that, you know, we all know the name, but actually people don't know what he looks like, people don't yeah. know what he sounds like. Yeah. Is that freeing, or did you still feel a kind of responsibility what, to the man? It is nothing like what... Taron must have felt in terms of approaching the role and, and, and you know, the, the concept of him playing Elton John. You know, uh, Bernie lives in relative anonymity, lives in Santa Barbara very happily with his wife, Heather. Um, and I think he enjoys that sense of anonymity. Um, but th th their connection has lasted... Oh, there is. But there's the two of you, lasted yeah. many decades. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, an essential need that they both have. I don't think that they could have done it without each other, really. Yeah. And, of course, you didn't just meet Elton. You've sort of become friends. You've stayed in his house and things, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. It was... It was uh, my girlfriend and I went and stayed with Elton and David for, for a few nights, uh, probably about a year ago, and it was all going really well, and we were all having a really lovely time. And then we, we got... We, uh, Elton and David are teetotal, but we got a little bit drunk, <laughs> and I got caught by the head of his security raiding his larder at three in the morning. <laughs> So, so grim. And I thought Elton didn't know. And the following day, I was just kind of, like, going about... You know, going about the conversation, he just went, you know, you're a little shit, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not my finest moment. <laughs> and, and when he heard you... I mean, presumably, you had to sing for him at some point. Uh, yeah, so we sort of did like, a, we did, like, a test where I went to Abbey Road and sang in front of a piano. He wasn't there. Uh, David was there, yeah. but um, Elton wasn't there. I think at that stage, that would have possibly made me spontaneously yeah. combust. <laughs> but, um, yeah, since then, we actually, we sang together earlier this year, which was an incredible experience. And, um, and, uh, and we actually have, a, we have an album coming out along um, with the film. Uh, Jamie Bell and I have a duet. We sing Goodbye Yellow Brick Road together. Um, this little known actor named Richard Madden and I have a duet. <laughs> uh, we do Honky Cat. And then um, I'm very, very proud to say that 
Elton and Bernie wrote a brand new song for me and Elton to do together, which comes out later this month. Oh, wow. Is this all on the soundtrack album? It's out on May 24th. That's the one. Yeah, May 24th. Yeah. But now, there's all these kind of weird connections, because you met Elton a long time ago, Jamie Bell, yeah. when you were yeah. a little boy. Yes. So, so um, when Billy Elliot screened at the Cannes Film Festival 150 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was there, and uh, it wasn't even called Billy Elliot at that time, it was called Dancer. Um, we weren't sure what the film was going to be, it was the first time we were kind of exhibiting it to people, and he was there. And, uh, and I remember meeting him at the reception afterwards, and it was the first time I'd ever met anyone. You know, I mean, he's strat stratospherically famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he was really moved. He was really kind of... Uh, I mean, he was weeping, to be fair, when I, when I met him. And, and, and so much of that film... I, th I think it was the, the relationship between Billy and Billy's father in that film. I don't know if you remember. At the end of the movie, Billy's father kind of turns up to see him perform. Yeah. Uh, when he's older, and Elton has, I think, told you, and he's also told me, that his dad, and he had a very complicated relationship with his, with his father, he never showed up to see him perform. Um, so I think that that really was quite profound for him. Uh, yeah. You know. And, and of course, and then the other connection is that Lee Hall, who wrote Billy Elliot, yes, also and wrote... Lee Hall then, he wrote the film, but then he wrote the musical as well. Yeah. Elton then did the music for the musical, so I saw him then. And, uh, yeah, I've been kind of cosmically tethered to him since, yeah, yeah. since then, yeah. And now, in terms of the, the movie, that, you know, where there is a musical, there is dancing. So are you cool with the dancing, Taron? Obviously, very good at singing. I'm oh, he's brilliant. very good. He's very good. Well, it's funny you should say yeah. that, Jamie. <laughs> 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 you so, dance as well? There's where... <laughs> <laughs> no, there is, um, there's one big, <laughs> there's one big sequence in the film where I sort of do have to dance a little bit. And our fantastic choreographer, Adam Murray, sort of, I think, realised quite quickly that it wasn't my forte. So, um, I, uh, I basically decided to do Billy Elliot. So, when you do <laughs> go and see our film, which has, I hope you will, um, yeah, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting is me doing my very best <laughs> Billy Elliot. <laughs> and with, with, with far less finesse than Jamie Bell did it. <laughs> yeah. and, and, Jamie, when, when dancing happens around you, yeah. do you feel really self-conscious? Like, people are going to go... I feel very pressured by it, <laughs> yeah. Because everyone expects you to be, like, really good. Cos yes. you were in that movie! You must be amazing! So, like, if you, like, for, like, example, at rap parties or, you know, like, I, I don't go to clubs. I'm not someone who, like, you know, does that whole thing. But, like, if I'm at a rap party, they're, like, they're, get, like, they're pulling me on the dance. Well, like, you've got to dance, you've got to do some dancing. But, like, I was a tap dancer. <laughs> like, tap dancing does not go down well in nightclubs. <laughs> you can't hear it for a start. Like, it's Quiet, hard. everyone. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, pulling out Fred Astaire moves in the nightclub. Uh, but now, here's the thing. Not many people know this. At Keanu Reeves, you trained as a ballroom dancer. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, no, no. I took some ballroom lesson Clear you go! <laughs> what did I just say? It's not training. <laughs> <laughs> but but why did you decide to want to learn ballroom? Um, it sounded like fun. <laughs> I'm sensing it wasn't. <laughs> it was, no, it was, it was thrilling. Actually, I remember the, one of the first lessons I had, um, when I did the waltz with the partner, and, oh my gosh, I mean, I got high. It was amazing, that first time doing a, and, and she led, and just, fucking, oh, excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just like... It was amazing, thrilling to be moving through space like that. Wow. And yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty special. And, and so then we did the foxtrot and some tango. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cha, cha, cha. And have you kept it up? Absolutely. No. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, fun no. as it was. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was great. And now, talking about, uh, you know, pop icons, uh, Saran Jones, uh, talk us through who you gave when you did... Celebrity stars in their eyes. <laughs> twice. I did it twice. Did you really? Mm, oh, I, I think did. we're talking about the, this is the first time, I think. So I did, so, um, so I was on Coronation Street for four years, yeah. and so they used to ask everyone who was on Corey, would you want to come and do um, Matthew Kelly's Stars in Their Eyes? So I just joined, so I'd hardly been there, like a couple of months. And I said, yeah, I want to do it. I want to be Sinead O'Connor with a ball cap and pop a tear out. <laughs> and they said, no, you can't do that. You have to be Madonna. So I was like, oh, which Madonna? And they said, uh, it'll be Hey Mr DJ. Not my personal favourite. I love Madonna, but not my personal favourite. Um, and, yeah, I did it. I did that, and then I did 
And the second time I did it, I was like, can I do something? Because I'm leaving Corey now, so maybe it'd be like an audition if I did, like, mm, loosely Catherine Zeta-Jones in Chicago. And, <laughs> and, and that's how I got around the second uh, time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a clip. Oh, uh, this no, 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 honestly, this is fabulous. This, this is so not. This is Saran oh, Jones God, this is just channeling. that... Channeling. I mean, yes, he does, Ella, but this is Saran Jones. Saran Jones brings us a new TV period drama, Gentleman Jack. Uh, this is BBC One Sunday nights at 9 pm from the 19th of May. Now, this is you working again with the great Sally Wainwright. Yeah, yeah. She wrote this, but in, am I thinking she's. Has she ever directed you before? No, never. So, no, we've worked on. This is the fourth project, but she's written all the others. Yeah, uh, yeah, Scott yeah. and Bailey, Unforgiven, um, Life and Crime of Julie Bottomley, and then this. So, it's. Um, so it's it's an eight-part series, and um, it's based on the real diaries of Anne Lister. And she um, she left almost five million words uh, of a diary, and it, it described her um, as an astute businesswoman, and she documented the social, economical um, landscape of Halifax at the time, but then a sixth of it was in code, crypt hand or secret code. And that was because she, um, those parts, the secret parts, documented her affairs with women mm. um, and relationships with women, which is a very important document because of the time, we don't have many documents that detail it in the way that she detailed it. So sometimes... You, when you say detailed it... Oh, it's very... <laughs> it's, yeah, it's explicit. Yeah. And so she's often referred to as the, um, the first modern lesbian. I mean, lesbian wasn't even a word because it covers 1832 to 1834. And she talks about her gender and her identity. I mean, it's so transgressive. It, it's, it's unbelievable that we don't already know about it. I mean, lucky for me that we don't, but... Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah unbelievable. Uh, well, listen, we'll talk about it more in a bit, but let's just have a look at uh, a clip. <laughs> and, and the diaries... Uh, so, did she hide them, or did just nobody know what they were? Because they, they lay on red for, what, 50 years or something? Yeah, so um, at the end of the 19th century, um, a, a relation of hers, John Lister, and his friend Arthur Burrell found them. And, when, and they managed to crack the code. And obviously when they cracked the code and they realised what was in the secret part of the diaries, Arthur Burrell said, you need to burn these diaries mm -hmm. because, you know, you can't be associated with that as a family member. But John didn't, so he hid them in the wall of the house, Shipton Hall, in Halifax, where we actually filmed. So I got to literally walk in her shoes, because wow. they allowed us... To, and yeah. you can visit there as well. It's a beautiful place, very magical. Um, and then, um, like, it wasn't until uh, the beginning of the 20th century that um, they were given to the library in Halifax. And then uh, I think it was uh, a historian uh, called Helena Whitbread that cracked the code, and, and then we're talking kind of like through the like, late 80s, 90s. But even when it's translated, it's still kind of... She uses odd phrases and things. To hide, yeah, because it was so um, d deeply secret, that part of her, um, that she couldn't... She, yeah. So she'd use things like um, incurring a cross about Miss Walker would mean masturbating over um, her, or um, wintering in Rome, which meant full sex, or going to Italy meant full sex. Um, right. So, yeah, she was still hiding it within the coat, yeah. Wintering in Rome? Wintering in Rome, oh. yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or grubbling, which just meant a quickie. OK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and am I right in thinking, Darren, you read uh, Elton John's diaries? Yes, I did. So, uh, that same trip mm. where I... Um... Oh, I thought he said trick. I thought he was wintering <laughs> in Rome. <I> thought... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's... He used the same code. <laughs> <laughs> that same trip where I was caught stealing Oreos from his kitchen. What well, kind of grubbling? <laughs> Gru yeah. grub grubbling. Grubbling down the kitchen. Um, <laughs> he did. I went and read his diaries, and my favourite one, my fav the, one, the only one I can remember, my favourite one is... Um, went to a restaurant tonight, did a moody and smashed a plate of French fries on the table. <laughs> Which was always stuck in my mind and so kind of characterised elements of my performance. Element. Did a moody. <laughs> did a moody. <laughs> Sounds really nice, but yeah. oh no, broken plates. Um, now, Saran Jones, look at you now. You know, uh, Dr Foster, Gentleman Jack on HBO. And yet there was a time in your career when maybe people don't predict it, those glittering heights. Uh, one of your first jobs, was it theatre education? Was it Craggy? T-I-E, yeah. T-I-E. Yeah. Crag Rats. Crag Rats. Mm. So Crag Rats would go around to schools. Yeah. And what, would you, what were you teaching people? So, uh, have you ever done any T-I-E? 
stuff. No. A drama school like that, yeah. So, so you get your van and you get your set and you get your costumes, which people have borrowed from all their aunties and nanas and stuff like that, <laughs> and bad wigs. Put it in the van, go to all the schools, and we were teaching post-education um, options. So we would go in and set our thing up, and then the 15, 16-year-olds would come in to their assembly, and then, <laughs> and then I and my team would sing songs to them about their options, and obviously have deeper chats as well, but it, it, was, it was like pop songs to let them know their options. One particular was an S Club <laughs> 7 song. <laughs> So we'd go in and sing, don't stop, never give up, hold your head high and reach the top. We're all doing an NVQ and working in a job. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get feedback. Yeah. And then, I mean, to make it worse, like, that's not bad enough. Um, then, then you give out forms and you say, so what did you think of the Crag Rats? Because obviously um, it's a community thing, you need to give feedback. And we'd go in the van, get our buddies from down the shop, and, um, and mine would usually say, the one with the dark hair has big tits. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Crag Rat? So that's the company, that's the TIE company oh, that okay. is... Yeah. And what did they mean when they picked Crag Rat? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it actually kind of sounds that? like more of your code. <laughs> <laughs> what was that mean? I was a like, Crag Rat. Like, yeah. We're going to inspire young people in their lives and yeah. we should call it Crag Rat. Yeah. But then, <laughs> then like, I did a, a diversity thing for bin men in bin Blackburn. Men. Yeah. In Blackburn. And we sang ABBA songs. Yeah. Ab wow. And that was. You've lived. <laughs> 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 Again, yeah. <laughs> right, uh, time for our next guest. This pop icon has sold over 80 million albums as a Grammy, three Brit Awards to her name. Now she's celebrating 30 amazing years in the business. Please welcome Kylie Minogue! <laughs> Do you know everybody? Do you know people? Connor Reeves? You know Kylie Minogue. I, I do, yeah. Actually, when I was filming The Matrix in 90, 98, you had come out with an album That was in time. Australia, wasn't it? Yeah, was yeah. it Impossible? Impossible Princess. Yeah, yeah. Impossible yeah. Princess, yeah. So, you were everywhere. Did we meet then? Um, there might have been a We've fleeting, been. passing oh, okay. something at a something. Something. Okay. In Sydney. Great to see you. Nice to see you. Congratulations. <laughs> So, does Kylie appear in Rocket Man? No. Why not? No. Why not? not? Sorry. It's Why not? not? Question. Although, actually, and this is totally <laughs> unplanned, the director of Rocket Man is sat in the audience. It's called Dexter Fletcher. And Dexter he appeared Fletcher? in Kylie's music video. Oh, I my forget the name goodness. of the song. Dex, go on, stand up. Oh, mate. Dexter. Go on. Oh, there he is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Which video did he do? Uh, a video called Some Kind of Bliss, and we were... That's it, sorry. I ...just running around in Spain. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Two days yeah. in Spain, just driving around in a car with Kylie, just <laughs> acting like I was... Trying to act like I was cool. <laughs> it was amazing. It was, you it was were so very much... cool. Oh, okay, oh. okay, thank you. <laughs> and, of course, then your other connection... Your other connection is... <laughs> I still am, yeah. as you can see. Very, very. Thank you. Very good. You're cooler right now. Yeah. Yes. But your, your other connection is you have duetted with Elton John. I did, a long time ago. Uh, yeah. I believe it was 1995. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. OK. At the Royal Albert Hall. Yes. Now, did you know that uh, Sir Elton would look like this? <laughs> <laughs> to be specific, he was... He went as Donatella Versace. Did I know? I think I knew. <laughs> but can one fully prepare themselves for that? No, no one cannot. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, now, this is a big weekend for Kylie and Kylie Minogue fans uh, because you're announcing um, a new album. S sort of, yeah, a greatest hits album, which turns out to be far more emotional than I had anticipated. Because this is your definitive greatest hits. Yes, although there wasn't enough room for all of them, so there are a couple missing. OK, it's out on the 28th of June, but people can pre-order it now. I've got it here. Uh, look, everybody, it's Step Back in Time! <laughs> yeah! Thank you. 
Now, I, th I mean, I, are, are they missing? I was looking at the eyes, I thought they were all on. I, well, almost. Sir Anne Jones, you have a, what hit are you looking for? Um, oh, it'd have to be especially for you. <gasps> I mean, we've got that, we've, we've got, got that. We've got that, yep. Uh, Tick. Darren. Lucky, right? Yes. Lucky. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And look, emotion. Oh, it's here! Oh, it is! Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll tell you what, let's have a look. We've put together a montage okay. of just a few. Amazing! <laughs> it's amazing. And because. Because you're one of those people, you're always working on the next thing, the next album. Yeah. What's it like to kind of stop and take stock? It's positively weird. And as I said before, it's, it's, it's emotional. I mean, uh, just looking at those few clips, I could bore you senseless with stories about the day that I did the song or we had to, you know, fight for weeks to get the song or do the video or the first time I performed it live. I mean, it's just... It's a lot to take in. Yeah. But also, I think what's lovely is it taps into uh, an audience's memory of 30 that's years. That's what I was... I was hoping that, as that was played, that, that that's the joy of it, um, put aside my emotional um, part of it. Uh, and pride, I definitely have pride. Some embarrassment, of course. But <laughs> I, I do hope that the, it takes the audience on, on a journey as well because it marks so many... I mean, there's 31 years' worth there, so... And, yeah, and then... <laughs> This, this album, with all these hits, uh, you're, you're taking it on tour. Oh, I am. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for reminding me, Claire. <laughs> yeah, we've got... I, I hope that wasn't news. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, what? Uh, no, we've got a, a bunch of summer shows coming up, yeah. And is this going to be kind of full-on, like, Kylie shows, or will it be slightly stripped back, or how is it...? Uh, it'll be pretty full. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. festival shows are slightly different because... That's the stage. You can really do not much more with it. You don't get a sound check. You just like rock up, pray, hope everything goes fine. So we'll we'll try and put enough on there. Yeah, yeah. And um, you're doing your first solo Glastonbury. Yeah. Uh, which that's the oh. yeah. I mean, every time it's mentioned, I mean, it's, it's, I, would, I did a, a phone interview yesterday, and I just just taking a little sip as the, um, I'm on the conversation, and the word Glastonbury came up. I was, <laughs> I just, I just about spat my coffee across. The <laughs> it's, um, it's a huge deal for me. Yeah. Why is that one so scary or so big in your? Because we're all talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess for me, you know, it's been. Uh, I was meant to headline Glastonbury in two thousand and five, and I couldn't. Um, I had a, a diagnosis then, which stopped me doing that. Um, so, <laughs> the road to Glastonbury has been. I think if you're going to get the legend slot. It's been a long road anyway, but, you know, it's been a long and winding road with a few speed humps along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... But now, here's the thing. So, we're celebrating your career tonight, 30 glorious years. I think people have an idea that once you've arrived, once you've arrived, show business is lovely. And you, that's how you make it seem. You make it seem like you arrived and then it's been 30 years of hits, hits, hits and loveliness. I think, since I last saw you, somebody, I think somebody sent me this clip on Twitter, and it's one of those things where you gotta go, like, a lesser performer, a lesser performer would have cracked. I might crack now, I'm no. just saying. But have you seen this recently? I saw, like, a tiny bit of it and I could watch no more. We're only watching a tiny bit of it. Fabulous. So, explain this. So, it's Spanish television in, I think, about 1990. Yes, that's about all I care to remember. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it was the Spanish... This is so weird. It was the Spanish government, and they decided they were trying to appeal to a younger demographic. Oh. Right. Uh, see, probably no-one told me that at the time. Oh, OK. They just shove so, you out. So they were trying to appeal to a younger demographic. I'm not sure it worked, <laughs> but what you have to admire here is Kylie Minogue's <laughs> professionalism oh in really some difficult circumstances that... <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the League of Gentlemen, surely. That's, that's Royston Valley right there. Uh, <laughs> Kylie, fuck them. <laughs> you were great. <laughs> you were great. <laughs> Do you remember it? Have you blanked it from your mind? I've blanked more than that, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> Just shut it down. Uh, congratulations. Thank 30 you. years, Kylie Minogue! <laughs> so good. Right.
It's music time. This 21-year-old singer won the BBC's All Together Now and has gone on to become Britain's entry for Eurovision 2019 at Tel Aviv. Uh, here with the song he'll perform on... Come in and meet everybody! Hi. 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 There you go. <laughs> uh, that was a great performance. Thank you. Uh, if it's as good as that on the night, I mean, yeah. that is some voice. Some and uh, by the way, if you want to buy Bigger Than Us, it is out now. So, uh, are you all set? Are you ready for Tel Aviv? Yeah, totally. I'm really excited, more than anything. So, yeah, I'm just ready to go out there and just sing my heart out. So. Yeah, yeah. Because now you've been going around uh, Europe. They've, they've been doing a yeah. thing where they're getting the other countries to hear yeah. our song this year. So, where have you been? I've been to Madrid, Croatia, Amsterdam, um, Spain. Like, I've done a TV show in Spain. Um, and I'm back here. Yeah, I think were, were there, might be some more, more but I forgot. Were they more excited than, than Kylie's <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was like, it's just been so crazy, like, to think I've got fans in other countries. I just never thought I'd ever have fans. Which is <laughs> so it's just crazy. No, no, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's fantastic. By the way, isn't there a strange link? You and Jamie... No, OK, so I'm going to just take over here. Sorry, <laughs> guys. This man is from Harleypool. Yeah. I come from a town called Billingham. They're, yeah. like, 20 minutes up the road, and I really applaud you for... for <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like a local hero. Yeah. <laughs> no, and not everyone, everyone back at home is like, make sure you say to Jamie Bell, like, you're from Hartlepool. He's only from around the corner, but, um, yeah, it's really nice to be with you and you guys, so... Yeah. Um, well, listen, good luck on oh, the thank night. Thank you so much. Um, because, seriously, it's a beautiful voice and oh, you thanks. perform it so, so well. Cheers. Uh, cheer him on, Michael Rice! That's nearly it, but we go just time for a visit to the big red chair. Uh, who's there? Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Lee. Lee, lovely Lee. And what do you do? Uh, I'm an AV engineer. An AV engineer? Yes. Is that like an aviation engineer? Let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit more boring than that. Do you know what that is? Audiovisual. Is it audiovisual? Kylie Minogue saying audiovisual engineer. That is correct. That is correct. <laughs> For an extra ten points, though. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, off you go with your story, Lee. Uh, me, me and some friends were drinking at a bar, and it was my turn to get around. So uh, I rocked up to the bar, and I went up next to this kind of scary-looking guy uh, who had some like tattoos, and he looked a bit rough. Uh, and I was it wasn't a bit. Me. It wasn't me. Don't me. <laughs> he was. He was a bit rough-looking, and I, I had my bar turn on, so I was a bit happy. And I kind of asked. I kind of established a conversation. Uh, I was like, because he was buying two drinks, so I was like, oh, you know, one for each arm. Uh, and then he, it got real awkward real fast because he turned around and to my horror, he only had one arm. <laughs> we can't laugh at that, we can't laugh at that, but it is a good story. There was a time when he would have walked, but that was a good story. That was, yeah, that was a good story. Uh, should we try one more? OK, let's try one more. Here we go. Hello! Hi there. Hi, what's your name? Uh, I'm Ed. Ed? Lovely. Yeah. And where are you from, Ed? Uh, Stoke-on-Trent. Stoke-on-Trent. And what do you do, Ed? Uh, I'm a software consultant. A software consultant. Kylie? Software. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not hardware. <laughs> uh, no, not so much the hardware, uh, more the software. Oh, steady on, Ed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, off you go with the story. Um, so, earlier on in my career, um, I had my first proper job interview, um, and obviously I was quite nervous. Um, I'd heard some tales about the person due to interview me, um, and she was a bit of a terror. So, um, I turned up ten minutes early um, in a place that I didn't, wasn't really familiar with, waited about half an hour. She was quite late, so I started phoning, and I, s I phoned her once, and I'm not very good on the phone and didn't really want to do this. Phoned her again, and then decided last second, or oh, I really need the toilet. So I put the phone in my pocket, ran into the toilet, <laughs> um, came out, pulled the phone out to see if she'd phoned me, and the phone was recording onto her voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> so she heard absolutely everything. So I come back to the room, she's there, she's about to pick up her phone. I'm, no, 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 please don't pick up your phone, please. <laughs> I did the interview, it went horribly, I somehow managed to get the job, and to this day I still don't know if she's heard it. <laughs> <laughs> can you walk? Oh, you can yeah. walk. Come on, Ed, give me more. <laughs> all right, that's really all of the time for. If you like 
to have a go in the Red Show yourself and tell your story. You can contact us via our website for this very address. Uh, please say a huge thank you to all of my guests tonight. Michael Rice! Thanks. <laughs> Jamie Bell! <laughs> Taryn Edgerton! <laughs> Saran Jones! <laughs> Keanu Reeves! <laughs> with musical duo Shakespeare's sister, comedy genius Kevin Hart, Oscar winner Octavia Spencer, and from Aladdin, Naomi Scott and Hollywood superstar Will Smith. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>